One of my favorite comedians, Jim Gaffigan, has a bit where he talks about the $1 Big Mac at McDonald's, and he was driving past, and he saw that advertised, and he said, well, I, I don't want to lose money on this deal, so I'll buy 80 of them. He does a better job setting the joke up, but it gets at the law of demand. As price decreases, our quantity demanded increases. Uh, on the other side of it, as price increases, our quantity demanded decreases. It makes sense. As prices go up, we want less of things. As prices go down, we want more of those things. And this concept, this law of demand, can be illustrated through the demand schedule, or a demand schedule, and through the demand curve, which is our next economic model that we will be building. And then we're going to look at the difference between a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand. And we're going to use the delta symbol to illustrate this concept of change. So let's look at a demand schedule first. And I've created a demand schedule for a fictional product, and I'm going to call that product Grebes. And the demand schedule simply is a list of prices and then the corresponding quantities demanded at each one of those prices. For example, if in our economy the price per grebe, our fictional product, is five cents, then in millions the quantity demanded will be 400. So 400 million grebes would be demanded if the price is five cents per grebe. Now, according to this demand schedule, we can see that it illustrates the law of demand because as price goes up, price per grebe goes up, we should see that the quantity demanded would decrease, that inverse relationship, and do, indeed we do see that. We can look at it the opposite way as well. As price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. As things get less expensive, we want more of them. As things get more expensive, we want less of them. Now we can take this, these data from the demand schedule and plot them on a graph and we're going to use this. Uh, the vertical axis is price, the horizontal is quantity, and we can build our demand curve using our demand schedule data. So here's how we do it. We say, okay, at five cents the quantity demanded is 400 million. So at five cents the quantity demanded is 400 million. We can put a, a data point there. At 10 cents, the quantity demand is 350 million. 10 cents, 350 million. At 15 cents, quantity demand is 300 million. 15 cents, 300 million. At 20 cents, is 250 million. 20 cents, 250 million. At 25 cents, it's 200 million. 25 cents, 200 million. And at 30 cents, it's 150 million. Now we just connect those data points using a line or a curve, and that creates our demand curve for Grebes, or specifically our demand for Grebes. This also shows the law of demand. As price decreases, the quantity demanded increases all along this curve. This also shows as price increases, the quantity demanded decreases all along this curve. Therefore, we can say that for, for the getting a change in quantity demanded, the determinant of a change in quantity demanded is price. So if there is a change in price, that will cause a change in quantity demanded. Well, let's take a look, though, at a change in demand as a whole, because there are five determinants that, that cause a change in demand, whereas there's only one determinant that causes a change in quantity demanded. Again, that's price. Let's take a look at a, a scenario here that, ch that will change demand. Let's say in our economy there's a drastic increase in federal income tax. That means I'm going to have, and a lot of other people are going to have, fewer dollars in their pockets, f less disposable income to purchase products, especially consumer products like Grebes. Here's a new demand schedule given this scenario. Fewer dollars in our pockets, therefore we can't purchase as many Grebes or other consumer products. So again, we have a list of price and the prices and corresponding, corresponding uh, quantities demanded at each one of those prices. So at five cents, the quantity demanded now in this scenario is 300 million Grebes. Whereas before, at five cents, 
we were demanding 400 million grebes. So you can see that a drastic increase in federal income tax has impacted our demand for grebes. So let's plot this out. So at five cents, the quantity demanded is 300 million. So five cents, 300 million. At 10 cents, it's 250 million. At 15 cents, 200 million. And at 20 cents, 150 million. And we can see that this has created an entirely new demand curve, and we can connect the dots using a ruler to create a new curve. That shows demand given this scenario of an increased federal income tax. Now we see that the curve has shifted inward or to the left. This shows a change in demand. So demand has specifically decreased because of this federal income tax. Let's look at a different scenario. Let's say that grebes are all the rage. There are celebrities online talking about how amazing grebes are. Everybody says you got to get one. In fact, everybody's saying you got to have at least 10 grebes, otherwise you're not cool. So that's going to have a significant impact on the demand for grebes, and it could create a new demand schedule. It's going to cause a change in demand for sure. It's going to create a new demand schedule for grebes. Uh, for example, at 10 cents, now, the quantity demanded in this scenario is 500 million grebes, whereas before, at 10 cents, our quantity demanded was 350 million grebes, but now, at 10 cents, our quantity demanded is 500 million, so we can put a dot there. At 15 cents, it's 450 million. At 20 cents, it's 400 million. At 25 cents, it's 350 million. At 30 cents, it's 300 million. And at 35 cents, it's 250 million. All right, about there. Now we can take our ruler, and you, you can already see that this has shifted the demand curve out, indicating an increase in demand. Here's our new demand curve showing the impact when grebes are all the rage in the economy. And again, we've see, we see a shift outward, a shift to the right to indicate, indicate an increase in demand, a change in demand specifically an increase. So let's talk about the determinants of demand, the five determinants that cause a change in demand. Again, there is only one determinant that causes a change in quantity demanded, and that's change along e any individual demand curve. So as price decreases, quantity demanded increases. But a change in demand is going to cause a shift in the curve entirely, and there are five determinants that will cause that shift. And we can remember them, we can remember them through an acronym, and the acronym is TIBER, T-I-B-E-R. The T is tastes and preferences, I, income, B, number of buyers, E, consumer expectations, and R, related goods. Let's take a look at a scenario for each one of these determinants of demand and, and decide whether they're going to increase and shift the demand curve to the right or out, or they're going to decrease demand and shift the demand curve inward or to the left. And we're going to look at a more realistic scenario. The U.S. beef consumption in May. And let's say we're always going to start, again, we have price on the vertical axis and, and quantity on the horizontal axis, just like price on the vertical here and quantity on the horizontal. So we're always going to start at demand curve B, and we're going to decide uh, which determinant of demand is impacting our consumption of beef and whether it's increasing or decreasing. Increasing to C or decreasing to demand curve A. And I've just got a, a few headlines that you might see in the news uh, that deal with each one of these five determinants. 
So the first one, let's, let's do tastes and preferences. The first one, the Surgeon General releases a warning about the overconsumption of beef and say, oh, it, it might make you sick, you should probably eat less beef. Well, that's going to result in people saying, I should probably eat less beef. It's going to shift the demand curve inward or to the left, shifting it from demand curve B to demand curve A because of tastes and preferences. People don't prefer to get sick, so they're going to stop eating or eat much less beef, shifting that demand curve to the left or inward. Income, let's see... Uh, there's a recession for the sixth straight month in the United States. Well, this, could affect, this would affect people's income. A recession means a decrease in gross domestic product. That usually means that people are losing their jobs, which means they have less disposable income, certainly, in the economy as a whole. So that would decrease the, the amount of income or disposable income that people would be using. They would probably look for a cheaper alternative for their protein and stop purchasing beef, which is usually fairly expensive, which would shift our curve from uh, demand curve B to demand curve A, that shift to the left or inward to show a decrease in demand. Number of buyers, let's say a, a, a headline would say, millions of immigrants swell the U.S. population. More people in a population means more consumers. That would increase the number of buyers for our product, in this case, uh, beef consumption or beef, people who eat beef. That would shift our demand curve from B outward, showing an increase in demand for beef from B to C. And again, that's because of the number of buyers and the number of buyers have increased. And then consumer expectations. This is a tricky one. This is a really interesting one. Uh, let's say a, an article or a, a headline said, price of beef will rise in June. Hmm. Well, we're looking at the U.S. beef consumption in May. If I eat a lot of beef and I see that headline, it says price of beef next month is going to be very expensive, well, I'm going to purchase more beef now and probably put it in the freezer because I don't want to purchase beef at a higher price next month. So I will purchase more beef now. That will shift our demand curve from B to C, indicating an increase in demand because of my consumer expectations. Let's, let's try, let's look at some related goods, and we're going to do two versions of related goods. One is called a substitute good, and the other one is called a complementary related good. So let's say a headline said, pork prices drop. Well, we might be thinking, well, how are pork prices related to the U.S. beef consumption? Well, pork is a substitute for beef for beef for a lot of people. And if pork, price start, pork prices start to drop significantly, people will go to the store and say, well, I, I mean, we'll just eat pork. Okay? Beef is expensive compared to pork, so we're going to not buy beef right now and buy pork instead. And that's because pork is a related good and it's a substitute for beef. So people can choose one or the other, and if the price drops on one, they're going to consume more of that one. And then let's say another related good, let's say there's a charcoal shortage. And we might, be, again, be thinking, well, how is charcoal related to beef consumption? Well, these are complementary goods. They go together. M many people will only cook beef on a charcoal grill. And if there's a charcoal shortage, if they can't find any charcoal, they may say, you know what, I'll just wait and not buy any beef until I can actually buy some charcoal. So those are complementary goods, and in that case, we would see the, the curve shift from B to A, a decrease in demand for beef in May because there is a charcoal shortage, and charcoal is that complementary good. And the last one I want to throw out here is uh, if we read the headline that said, Beef Prices Fall and Consumers Purchase More Beef. Well... Okay, so beef prices fall. Well, which determinant is that? Oh, prices fall. That doesn't cause a shift in demand. That simply causes a change along the demand curve. So as prices decrease, the quantity demanded increases. That's what that headline was saying. Prices fell, prices fell and more people bought beef. So that's just a shift 
along this curve showing a change in quantity demanded as opposed to the five determinants that actually cause a change in demand.